Hi there, Michael Volshinovich here, and welcome to another episode of How I Shot It. And in this lesson, we're going to be covering this particular image here, which has been requested by a few people. And uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about mixing natural light with color gel. So I think we've got some interesting things to, to cover with this particular image. And as always, we're going to look at the lighting diagram, then jump into Capture One, and finish off with the retouching that was done inside of Photoshop. Now, before we get started, please do visit me at the social media links below and also help to support me by checking out my style packs, actions, and prints at my store, which can be found at store.vibrantshot.com. The link for that is in the description below. So this is the out of camera image here. And of course we'll talk about how we got it to its retouch state shortly, but let's dive into the capture end of things first. Take a look at the lighting before we actually jump into the retouching portion of it. Uh, now before we do that, uh, settings wise here, I had ISO 400, 1 400th of a second, F 5.6 and 110 millimeter on a medium format. So again, about an 80 millimeter equivalent on 35 millimeter. And um, this was shot on my uh, phase one IQ 250. So it's a 50 megapixel shot. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop here. So this is the start of our lighting diagram here. So there's our finished image. And uh, as you can see, we've got our subject here, the wall behind her with this sort of textured background and wallpaper. And uh, we've got a bank of windows on the left side of the subject. Now the natural light itself was fairly soft and indirect, so I didn't really have to worry about hard light in this particular scenario. But nevertheless, what I ended up doing was adding a bank of V-flats here. These are black V-flats uh, close towards the last window here. And the reason for that was just to help flag off some of the light that's coming in here, which would just make the overall lighting a lot softer on the subject, and it would end up filling a fair bit of the right side. I wanted to actually have some shadowing on that right side so that the fill from that light, that colored light, will actually be accented pretty well within the subject. And that's ultimately what you want. You want to have a fair bit of shadow in there uh, within your subject to really help fill it in. That's what really brings out that color. So um, that's kind of why I, I um, covered up that window and then just left these two as sort of the primary light source. Now, when it comes to the fill light itself, let's go ahead and turn that on. So what we have is just um, an inexpensive Alien B light with a small parabolic. It was about a three foot parabolic. And I mounted the gel inside of the parabolic. So I just took the baffle off, uh, mounted in with some gaff tape on the inside, fairly close to the actual uh, strobe head. Now be careful when you do that to have uh, the modeling light turned off because if you don't, you can melt your gel. So obviously I did that, put the baffle back on. And um, in this case, this was a 20 by 24 inch sheet. Um, and it is Roscoe Lux number 375 Cerulean Blue. So you can just find that on B&H if you want to get it. And uh, it is actually a fairly nice color because it's a little bit of a mix of, you know, your standard blue and a cyan. And it is fairly deep. So just um, one layer of it is enough to become really noticeable in your final image. But of course, if you need more, you can always fold it in half or buy two sheets. They're about $6 a piece. So relatively inexpensive. Now, when it comes to the actual power of this uh, head, you really have to experiment. It just depends on how close or how far you get it. Obviously, because I'm dealing with a situation where I have natural light coming in here, uh, we can't have it too powerful because it will, of course, overpower the natural light. But uh, one thing that you will notice using some of these denser gels is they actually cut uh, at least a stop or so, sometimes two stops of power out of the head as well. So it's, it's a lot easier to kind of power down that head and, uh, you know, not make it too powerful for your image. So always start very low. Uh, one thing you'll also find with uh, working with gels is that if you really crank this up, you'll just get white light. It kind of negates the purpose of the gel. So you always want to start very low and see where it takes you and obviously make it strong enough where it's, you know, filling in those shadows, but also not so strong that the color is starting to get muted. And so it does take a little bit of experimentation to get those ratios right. And if you are working uh, with gels or planning on working with gels, make sure you budget some extra time for a uh, setup of the shot, because it always does take a little bit longer than just working with, you know, standard light sources. So the last thing to talk about is in terms of, uh, you know, distance of this light and kind of relation of the light to the subject. So I wanted to have it so that it's not so far away that it starts to fill a lot of the background. You can see there's, of course, a little bit of spill on the background, but I also didn't want it just really filling up the space. But I also didn't want it so close that it doesn't cover the majority of my subject. So I kind of just kept backing it off until I could see the light fall off kind of going down towards uh, the knee area. And that was sort of my goal there is to get it as close as possible, but still cover uh, the majority of my subject. And in terms of positioning, it was actually fairly high up. If we just zoom in here and uh, take a look at 
our catch light. You can see there's the catch light from that uh, strobe there, and it is positioned fairly high above. So just slightly above the subject there is where I ended up uh, putting that light. And uh, ultimately, that is really it in terms of this particular shot. And actually, the lighting was fairly flexible. I had uh, some shots where the model was turned this way. I had some where she was uh, turned more in this direction. Um, and, and so it kind of worked uh, in a variety of different scenarios. And uh, ultimately, that was thanks to the fact that it was you know, a fairly soft light source. You don't really want to use something that is overly hard here. Um, it can look good sometimes if you're working with multiple hard light sources and you start to combine them. But in this case, because this window light was so soft, if I use something really hard here, we could start seeing some um, shadows that are not particularly pleasing. So that's why I kind of you know, wanted to balance off a soft light source with another relatively soft light source. So now that we've got that all sorted out, let's go back into Capture One and take a look at sort of the preparation of the raw file and the retouching as well. So taking a look at the raw file inside of Capture One, you can see that overall adjustments are fairly minimal. If we just um, reset everything here, you can see that all we really did was brought up the highlights a little bit and opened up the shadow slightly. So um, a little bump in contrast here, a slight reduction uh, or essentially an opening up of the shadows and then a fair bit of clarity actually on this one. I thought with the more stylized look with the gel, it can handle a little bit more clarity, a little bit more punch there and then um, brought in the blacks just slightly here in levels just to give it a little bit more contrast and then the same thing on the highlight end so if we just toggle that on off you can see that's just adding a little bit more contrast in the image but not a tremendous amount and other than that that is really all i did for this knowing that most of the color grading i'm going to do is inside of photoshop and then ultimately in the end you'll see that uh, there was just a, a tremendous amount of grading done at all so uh, all of the grading that we did on this image we could have also done inside of capture one so really it's an entirely a toss-up in this particular case so let's go ahead and go into photoshop here and um, choose our image so you can see here is sort of the before and after and uh, again toggling that on and off uh, the one thing that i did that you won't see here was um, rotating this image so inside of uh, capture one you can see that it's slightly kind of rotated this way and it was just sort of bugging me I think in terms of angle that uh, these lines behind her were sort of tilted and uh, I just felt that it was much nicer going sort of vertical and, and just her body position looked better in this case and so I used a little bit of content aware fill to uh, crop this in a more pleasing way and uh, in terms of the rest of the retouch, one thing I did was I did extract the subject from the background, thinking that maybe I'll end up doing a lot in terms of color grading on the background or adjusting the luminosity of the background. And really, I didn't do a tremendous amount of that. I actually just ended up darkening the background a little bit. And um, looking at it now, I mean, I could have just completely omitted that. However, I do still always like having that extraction if it's easy to do, because um, if I'm contouring around the subject with dodging and burning, I don't have to worry about spilling my contour onto the background. So um, if it's easy to do, I tend to always do it. And then in terms of the actual um, subject layer, this is sort of the dodge and burn portion of it. And uh, if we expand these two dodge and burn uh, layer stacks, I'll show you kind of what I did there. Now, when it comes to these gelled images, I do really strongly recommend if you're doing the dodge and burn to always do it um, with this helper layer because it's it becomes really difficult to see areas that you need to dodge and burn when you start mixing these different um, colors. It's really very distracting and it's hard to spot the areas that you want to actually target. So by pulling color out of the equation with this, it becomes a lot easier to see the areas that we need to work on. So uh, the first thing, let's go ahead and turn off the contouring so that it's not uh, throwing us. And if we just look at the masks here, uh, you can see these are just uh, levels, or sorry, these are curves, and then I've just masked in the areas that I want to dodge and burn. So the burn, not a tremendous amount of work. The dodge actually had uh, much more, so I kind of dodged throughout the body, just kind of evening out um, some of these uh, variances. And you'll find that with gels, you do get quite a lot of them. And uh, if we just toggle that on and off, you can see what that did. So overall, still relatively subtle, but uh, I think it just kind of polishes everything up and then helps to bring those transitions together really nicely. And then uh, finally, on the contouring end, you can see that I really just punched up a lot of these highlights um, because I just wanted them to be a lot more noticeable than they are in terms of shadows. I did a little bit of burning here, but very, very subtle. And then in terms of the highlight mask, you can see that's it there, just really accenting a lot of these highlight areas that we have throughout the body. So if we 
turn that on and off you can see that is the effect of the dodge and burn and then as far as the grade again it's kind of my typical layer stack but the one big thing that you'll notice I had probably like 90 percent of the color grade was just this color balance adjustment that made it look a heck of a lot better as well as the skin saturation so i just took a lot of the yellow saturation out of the skin and then this color balance ultimately just took some of the you know not so pleasing skin tone out of it uh, which was a little too yellow and um, a little bit too green in my opinion and so to offset that i just added a little bit of blue and magenta into the mid-tones and that's kind of where it got us so again majority of the actual color grade here was just these two adjustment layers and certainly something that you could have done inside of capture one to finish the image if that's where you prefer to color grade your images so with that all done, if we jump back into Capture One here, this is sort of the final um, PSD. I always like to use the round trip feature of Capture One, get the final PSD back in here and put any finishing touches on it. Uh, the main one really being uh, just a little bit more desaturation here. I tend to always err on the side of caution with saturation inside of Photoshop and then just finish it off in Capture One. Uh, a little bit more clarity to finish and a little bit more contrast just bringing out those highlights so uh, very subtle finishing touches here if we do it before and after you can just see the highlights are a little bit more punched up a little bit more contrasty so as you can see the overall retouch here was relatively straightforward and took about half an hour or so nothing overly crazy to get it to this state so please do comment down below if you're finding this series helpful. There isn't uh, a tremendous amount of interest, it seems, in this series, so I don't know how much longer I'm going to continue it. But nevertheless, if there's images that you want me to feature, uh, just chime in on Instagram and mention me and just uh, say that you'd like me to talk about uh, that particular image. So um, hopefully you found the video helpful and educational. And until we see you next time, make sure you stay safe and stay healthy and stay creative. Bye for now.